In this video, in the Open Framework Super Basic series, we're grabbing, loading, and manipulating video, pulling the pixels out of it, making them psychedelic, and making weird video art stuff using Open Frameworks in 360. <laughs> Welcome back again. In this video in the Open Framework Super Basic series, I want to look at playing and manipulating video from within inside Open Frameworks. I'm going to do a bit more by digging in and actually pulling the pixels out of the video frame by frame and messing with them. In previous videos, we've looked at things like the sound player and we've done some drawing and we've worked out how we can address pixels in loops. In this video, I'm going to use the OF video player object to load and open a video, play it to screen, and then we're going to go and grab the pixel data out of it frame by frame and start to manipulate it. And you'll begin to see how you can do a lot more with video than just play it. I've made a new project working on Mac OS X um, and I've called it Video Sketch. And you can see in the folder here, I've got my standard layout. Um, I've got my source folder, which is where all the stuff happens. And inside the bin data folder, I've put a movie exactly the same way that we do with the sound. This is the first place that Open Frameworks will look if you ask it to load files or data. We can give it a different file path, but this means we just have to give it the name of the file. And I've got a video that I shot um, some, a couple of years ago, and I was working in Hong Kong, working with Hong Kong Design Institute, and I was doing a lot of walks and was shooting video like this, which is with a 360 camera. And this is actually walking through the MTR, Mass Transit Station at Chu Kang Leng, where the Hong Kong Design Institute is. And I was using these and manipulating them and make slit scan stuff. And I thought this might be an interesting little loop of video to work with. You can work with your own. Uh, it doesn't really matter where it comes from, resolution quality, whatever you want to substitute. All you need to know is the file name. So I've got this video and I've taken the name of the video. And in my Open Frameworks project, in the header file, the first thing that I've done is just declared an OF video player object, exactly the same way that we do with the sound player. We just say, can we have a new Open Frameworks video player object? And I'll call it video, but it could be Fred or video two or whatever else you like. And now that that object is there, I can load a file into it and do stuff with it. So in my CPP file, in the setup, I take this video object and I tell it to load and give it the name of my video. And if there was a directory path, I'd, I'd give it all the directory paths. And because I don't want the sound to play, there's a bunch of things that I can ask a video player to do. And one of which is set volume. So I then say, video, please set the volume of whatever's gonna play to be, in this instance, zero. And just like with the OF sound player object, we can set the speed. And this can be negative and positive to make it play forwards or backwards. Word of caution, if you want to manipulate file speed when you're playing back, particularly video, have a look at the different types of codecs, the compressors that you can use. Some codecs are really efficient in that they make good looking small files, but they're only efficient playing forwards at 100% speed. They're really bad at playing backwards or fast seeking. So different file codecs are really good at seeking to random frames really fast or uh, are playing forward and having high quality small files. So the different codecs will do different things for you. In this instance, I'm gonna set the speed to be 1.0, so it'll play forwards at 100%. One of the other things that a video can do is we can make it loop. So when it gets to the end, we can say start again, or we can say when you get to the end, don't start again, don't loop. So the loop state can be a number of different things. OF, none, normal, or palindrome. Palindrome being, it's the same forwards as backwards. So when it gets to the end, it'll start playing backwards. When it gets to the beginning, it'll start playing forwards, backwards and forwards like a yo-yo. We're just gonna set it to normal, and then we tell our video to play. So it sends an instruction into the video object to start playing. That's good, but we need to keep getting the video player to get the next frame. So in the update loop, we just say video 
update. So it checks, is there another file available? Sorry, another frame in the video available. And then to draw it to screen, super, super easy. We just say video, draw, and we can give it an X, Y, and an X, Y coordinate. So you can say actually draw yourself at a certain size or a certain aspect ratio or at a certain position on the screen. And I've told it to start drawing from zero, zero. So top left and draw the width and the height of the screen. So it'll always be how big our screen is. And if I compile and run that now, so it loads my video, sets the sound to zero, sets the speed to 100%, tells it to play, and it's updating the frame and the loop and just drawing it to the screen. When it gets to the end of the video, it'll start again because we set the loop to be normal rather than none. Because I've got the F key set up, which we set up in, if you look at the video on the hacking project files, when I set F, it'll toggle the full screen and the video will automatically resize. So there we have our video and I can grab numbers of videos and swap between them and do all kinds of things. And now I've got instant video control and the video might only have a little bit of stuff in it, might be relying on sound. And there's additional things that you can put in video track markers and all sorts. But I wanna do something a little bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do is I want to be able to change the speed of the video. So in my key press statement, I've set a little bit of this up before, but we're going to walk through it. I'm using a switch statement to say, get the key. And I'm going to say, if I can comment these down here, if the case is that we're using the OF left key, which is this reserved word, meaning the left hand arrow on the keyboard, I want you to get the speed of the video, take away 0.1 from it, and then use video set speed to whatever this number is. And if I press the right key, I'm going to say video get the speed. It'll return me the speed between 0 and 1, or, you know, minus whatever and plus whatever. And I want to add 0.1 to it and then set the speed. So now with the left and right keys on my keyboard, I can speed up and slow down dynamically. And I could link this to the mouse or the light or the volume in the room or anything else. But now I've got the ability to manipulate that. So if I compile and run this now, we can mess around with the video speed. And I could make these numbers bigger so I can make it accelerate fast and decelerate and all kinds of stuff. So I run this full screen and if I press the right key, I get super fast. And if I press the left key on my keyboard, it starts to slow down 0.1 each time. You can see it's looping normally. And now I'm getting to the point where it's really visible how slow it is. So this is probably running at two frames a second. And now I've hit zero. And if I press the left key again, it's now running backwards at 0.1 speed, so one tenth speed. And I can increase the speed that it's going to go backwards. Now, because of the kind of codec I've used, you'll see it's not actually very good at going backwards because of how it seeks to find the frame. It's very good at going forwards, but not good at going backwards. So this is what I mean about codec choice. But going backwards and I can keep hitting the right key and go back to going forwards, which is kind of nice and cool. But I want to show you something else that we can also do is that the video, every the video object, every time we say update, it loads a new frame from the video file. We can go and get all of the pixels in that video file which is what we're going to do now and show you how you can muck around and manipulate the video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make in my header file, a new OF image object. I'm not going to load a picture into it, but I'm going to use it as a place to grab the pixels out of the video and put all the pixels into it, but manipulate them on the way there. So I'm using the OF image, image object just as a container to shovel the pixels from the video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a threshold switch. I'm going to say, if the color of this pixel or the brightness of this pixel is more than X amount, then make it just white. 
And if it's less than X amount, make it black. So I can posterize or just make the video into one of two colors. And to keep track of what this point is, more than this much or less than this much, I'm gonna make a new variable called threshold, an integer variable, and it's global so every function can get it. And in that, I'm gonna say, if the color of a pixel in the video is more than the threshold, make it white. If it's less, make it black. In my setup, I'm gonna set the threshold to start out being 120. So that's like in the middle. The values can be between 0 and 255 for the brightness. And then I'm gonna initialize my image object with all of the pixels from the video. Ordinarily with an image, before I can use it properly, I need to set the width and the height and whether it's grayscale or whether it's RGB or so on to describe to the computer how much memory should you declare to put all the pixels inside. The simplest thing is I can say to video, get pixels and it's instruction to the video object saying, give me all the picture data that you've got inside you for this frame. And I grab that and I put it into this image. So now I have my video object, which will play files and I have an image with a still frame from the video in it, which you know, I could do all sorts of things. I could um, use it to save that out to a file. Every time I pressed a key, I could say, get me the pixels from this frame of the video and save them out or do something else. So I've set up my image object and it's now the same size as the video. And every time I update the video, there'll be a new video frame. So in the update loop, I'm gonna do the same again. Get the pixels from the video and put it into the image. Now, because we're in the middle of this loop, I have to force the image to update and it updates all the pixels in it. So now in my video, my image object is a picture of that frame of the video. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a simple loop that goes through every pixel line by line across the width uh, line zero and then line one, line two, line three, and just says, what's the value of this pixel? If it's more than the threshold, actually change the color of this individual pixel to be white. If it's less than the threshold, change it to be black. So what I'm gonna do here, just tidy up this code so it's indented properly. So in my update loop, I'm gonna make an OF color called color and I've made a loop here that starts out and goes across from X is zero to the width of the image. So I go image, get width. And it just tells me how wide the image is. And I say, great, so maybe a loop that just goes from pixel zero all the way across to the end. And as I'm going across, I'm saying image, get the color at a particular pixel point. Now, if I wanted, I could do this with the mouse and just as I drag around, say, what's the color at this point that the mouse is on top of? But here I'm gonna go, what's the color of pixel zero, pixel one, pixel two, all the way across to pixel whatever the image width is. And then I've got this simple if else statement. And I can say, if the red value, I'm just using the red value of the color, because when I say, get me the color, it'll give me an RGB value for that unless it's a grayscale image. And I can say, if the red value of whatever's inside color is greater than this, this number threshold, which we set up here to be 120, so that's halfway through the black to white, then just set all of the color to be 255. Otherwise, set the color to be zero. So check if the red value at this pixel is more than the threshold. If it is, set it to be white. If it's not, set it to be black. And then I just set the image set color at this point that we're at, this pixel in the X and Y to be color. And then I go along in the X to be, to go and have a look at the next pixel and the next pixel and the next pixel. And just like we've seen before, going across and then down, I've got an outer loop that every time I've counted across all the pixels on one line, it steps down the Y position to the next line, the next line, the next line, the next line. And it does this for however many pixels in the image. Obviously, if you have a bigger image, it's doing lots more loops. And then to force those changes in, I just run image update. 
And here in my draw loop, rather than every frame saying, draw the video, I'm going to say, draw the image. And in my update, I'm going to be changing the image every time. So now, if I run this, compile and run this, we make a video object, we load the video into it, and every update we're saying, grab a new frame. And we're saying, transfer that into this image, check through every pixel. And if it's above this much, make it this black. If it's, uh, it's white, if it's above below this much, make it black. And there we go dynamically organized posterized video, which is really, really cool. Because knowing this, I could swap the colors to be anything that I like. And I could even set the threshold by the time of day or the mouse position or anything. Now, to show you what's going on a little more easily, in exactly the same way we use the left and the right key um, on the keyboard to change the speed, I've got this global variable or the shared variable called threshold that I set up and put 120 into. But actually, I'm going to say I want in my key press function, two more cases. If I press the up arrow key, I'm going to say if the threshold is less than 250, plus equals five, add five to it. So the maximum it'll get to is 255. But if I press the OF down key, which is this reserved key, keyword meaning the, the, the down key, if the threshold is greater than 10, minus equals five, take five off it. So now by pressing the up and down keys, I can change this threshold value that I'm using in the middle of my work out what color it should be. And what that means is every time I grab the color of a pixel, I compare it to threshold, I can change what it's comparing it to. So I can say actually now only make this color white if it's more than 250 in the original image or only make it black if it's less than 10. So I can change where I'm dividing this threshold of black and white when I process the pixels that I'm pulling out of my video. So we compile that and run it. And it's doing standard because I initialized it with 120. But if I press the up key, you'll see stuff is only white if it's now very, very bright in the original image because I'm increasing the threshold and I can increase it all the way, which is kind of moody. And if I press the down arrow, you'll see I'm saying, actually, the threshold is now really, really low. So even if it's like gray in the video, it's going to be white in my image. And I can get to the point where it's nearly completely ble bleached out, which is just beautiful. And I can play with that. So I've got this left and right to change the speed. So I can make this run super slow. And now I can mess around with the threshold dynamically. And because I've got this control over the pixels, I could make any change to this. And I could also add alpha values into this to make it semi-transparent and start to use bits of the image's mask, change its size, really simply manipulating video as an object itself with speed and position and drawing and frame rate and uh, volume and all of that stuff but I can also grab all the image data out and really mess with it. There's one last thing that I want to do, which links to when we were looking at color a couple of videos ago. And instead of saying, I want to set the color above the threshold to be white, so it'll be black or white, I'm going to use the set HSB, hue, saturation, and brightness to make it a little more interesting. So in the middle of my loop, I'm saying, instead of color, set it to be white, 255, I'm saying color, set the HSB, and I'm using my map function again to say, get the X value, which is going to go in my X loop as we count across the pixels between 0 and 255, and map that so that across the screen, it'll give me a rainbow. So instead of just saying, if it's above the threshold, make it white, I'm saying, if it's above the threshold, look at where it is on the left to right and change the color depending upon that. If it's below the threshold, it'll still be black. So I'm going to grab the X value as we go through this loop. And I'm going to tell the map the X value can be between zero and the width of the image. But what I want to map it to is naught to 255. 
So that's a, a range of the saturation, uh, sorry, the, the color from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Choose one of these colors, depending upon where I am, and the X, and then set my saturation to be 255 and my brightness to be 255. So now we should have something a little bit funkier. So we compile it, run it, and there we go. The background color is all the way across the color spectrum by using set HSB. And the black level is controlled. Is it going to be one of the rainbow colors or black by me changing the threshold? So now I can control the speed. And I've got this funky press it up and down keys start to play with my video controls. And I don't have to run this in this way. I could do inversions and flips and mirrors and say, grab all the pixels and organize them by color, anything that I like. So that's a really simple introduction to playing with video files and playing them, which there's a whole lot of other cool stuff. And then being able to grab the image data out of them and really mess with it. And this is just the beginning of being able to do psychedelic or all kinds of beautiful, wonderful things. Now that we've got access to the individual pixel data in each frame of video super simply. So that's the end of the video. If you've got questions or comments or feedback or suggestions, please do put them in the comments. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know about the projects that you're up to and let me know if there's videos that you want to see. And I'll see you on the next video in Open Frameworks Super Basics.